Hi readers, welcome back. It's great to see you. Today we're going to read this great text, Listen Buddy by Helen Lester. Okay, look closely at the picture on your screen or the picture right here. Listen Buddy by Helen Lester. What do you think the genre of this book is and why? Now would be a great time to pause the video, turn and talk to someone around you, write in your reader's notebook or on a sticky or anywhere that you possibly can. I think the genre of this book is fiction. Now here's why. When I look at the picture on the front, that looks like an animal who's ready to possibly talk and it is the main character of the story. Do animals talk in real life? No. Because we know that animals don't talk in real life, I think this is definitely a fiction text. That's the evidence for my thinking. All right, here's our learning target. Follow along as we read together. One, two, three. I can predict what will happen next in the text. Who has background knowledge on what the word predict means? Let's hear it. That's right, making a smart guess. Predicting means that we are making a smart guess, not a random guess, but a smart guess based on what has happened so far in the text. So, so we make predictions based on the text clues we see in a book. This might be the pictures that you see. It might be words that you see and things that have already happened. So we think about what would make sense, what would happen next. As we read today, we are going to stop and make predictions together. So we'll make four thoughtful predictions. What do you think after the beginning? Then what do you think? What do you think next? And how do you think and predict it will end? So making a prediction is a smart guess based on what has already happened. So it's not a random wild guess, but a smart guess. And stopping to do that several times along the way, like this picture reminds us to do, is a really smart move as a reader. All right, readers, here we go. Listen, buddy, by Helen Lester. He's pretty cute. Buddy's father had a beautiful big nose. He was a great sniffer. Carrot juice. <laughs> Buddy's mother had beautiful big teeth. She was a great chomper. Buddy had beautiful big ears. It didn't matter. Hmm. I think that even though Buddy has great, big, beautiful ears, he's going to have a hard time listening. Now, here's why I think that. Mom and Dad both have features on their body that just because they have great features, it means they're great at using them. And when the author writes, it didn't matter, that's a clue to me. That's a text clue that something's different for Buddy. Let's read to find out if that prediction is correct. When Buddy's parents sent him to the vegetable stand to get a basket of squash, he came home with a basket of wash. Oh, dear. Look at all that laundry he came home with. When they asked him to buy 15 tomatoes, he came home with 15 potatoes. What mistake does Buddy make, readers? As you listen to this fiction text, I want you to notice what Buddy thinks he hears because he's actually not listening. Was my prediction correct? Was your prediction correct? Even though he has these great, beautiful ears, does that mean he's a good listener? It sure doesn't sound like it. And we have evidence so far. When they said squash, he brought wash. When they said tomatoes, he brought potatoes. So that's evidence that shows me he is not a great listener. He's not hearing the words they're saying. 
Buddy's father. Listen, Buddy, will you please bring me a pen? Who? asked Buddy. You, said his father. Will you please bring me a pen? A what? asked Buddy. A pen, said his father. Will you please bring me a pen? Sure, said Buddy. Buddy's father said, Listen, Buddy. The words on this page don't tell you what Buddy does. But how do you know what he does? What does the author do? That's right, readers. The author gives us some text clues in the picture. So I know as we become better and better readers, it's easy to sometimes think, oh, I don't need books with pictures. But pictures add so much to the text and so much to the story. So when Buddy's dad asked him to bring him a pen, what did he bring him that rhymes with pen? That's right, hen. I can tell by the picture clues, Buddy's dad is really frustrated. So I'm inferring he's frustrated right now because Buddy didn't bring him a pen. Buddy brought him a hen. And when somebody's face looks like that and looks disappointed and it keeps happening over and over, I know they're frustrated. Let's read on to find out what will happen next, readers. Buddy's mother said, listen, Buddy, will you please get me a slice of bread? Who, asked Buddy? You, said his mother, will you please get me a slice of bread? A what of what, asked Buddy? A slice of bread, said his mother. Will you please bring me a slice of bread? Sure, said Buddy. Buddy's mother said, listen, Buddy. Okay, readers, look at those picture clues. What can you infer happened? Did he bring her a slice of bread? Oh my gosh, this author likes to be funny. A slice of bed. Oh, I hope you've never sliced your bed. Oh man, based on what's happened so far, Buddy has now not followed directions, not listened, and only brought things that rhyme with what his parents ask five times. So I'm predicting he's going to make the same mistake again. What are you predicting? Why do you predict that, reader? Let's find out. Somehow, Buddy's mind was always wandering too far away from those beautiful ears. His parents tried yelling, Listen, Buddy! They tried whispering, Now, readers, if Buddy is having a hard time listening, why would they try yelling? And then why would they try whispering? Try it with me. Listen, Buddy! Listen, Buddy. Sometimes a whisper can catch your attention when you're not expecting it. But it didn't even work for Buddy, did it? Oh man, since they're trying different things to try and get his attention and get him to be a better listener, I'm predicting they're gonna try something else, but I don't know what that something else might be. Let's read to find out. One day, Buddy got permission to go for a long hop. He had never been allowed to go beyond the vegetable stand. Listen, Buddy, his parents warned him. Just remember that at the end of the road, there are two paths. The path to the left will lead you around the pond and back home. But the path to the right will lead you to the cave of the scruffy varmint. And that scruffy varmint has a nasty temper. So be sure to take the path to the left. Right, asked Buddy. Left, said his parents. Right, said Buddy. And with a salute of his paw, he hopped away. Uh-oh. My prediction was wrong, actually. I was predicting after they tried a couple things to get his attention, they'd try something different. That's not what happened. But now, based on what I've read so far, when they said, go to the right, and he questioned right, they said, go to the left. And he said, right, like I got it. I'm predicting, based on what's happened so far in the text, Buddy's gonna go to the right. 
Which way do you think he's going to go and why? Oh, man, let's find out. Feeling very grown up, Buddy hopped along past the vegetable stand and on to the end of the road. Now, let's see, he pondered. Was I supposed to go left or right? Or right? Or left? Uh-oh. He thought as hard as he could. The last thing I said was, right, like I understood. So that must be right. Right he went. My prediction was correct because I've been paying attention to the character and the actions he makes. He continues to make mistakes with the listening of things his parents are telling him. So because I used that background knowledge and what I've read so far, I was able to make an accurate prediction. How about you? Nice job. Way to go. 25 hops later, Buddy discovered that right was wrong. There in front of his cave was the scruffy varmint doing scruffy things that varmints do, like snarling, missing his hair, musing his hair, rubbing dirt on his knees, and scratching a whole lot of itches. At his feet was a large soup pot. What are you going to do with that soup pot? asked Buddy. What does one usually do with a soup pot? Bake pie? replied the scruffy varmint not too kindly. I'm going to make some soup. Some what? asked Buddy. Soup, snarled the scruffy varmint. Oh, readers, think about what you know about Buddy. What do you think he hears? What do you predict? Why do you predict that? Let's read on and check your prediction. Buddy had forgotten his parents' warning about the scruffy varmint. He asked eagerly, may I help? The scruffy varmint was not fond of having company, but with help, he'd have his soup sooner. So he said, all right, bunny rabbit, come help me gather firewood. Who what? asked Buddy. You, firewood. Buddy eagerly hopped ahead of the scruffy varmint very gently. He gathered a large prickly bundle, which he held out proudly. Look at the picture clues. Roughly, the varmint said, I said firewood, not briarwood, as he grabbed the bundle. He yelped, plucking the sharp thorns straight from his paws. Does that fit what we know with Buddy so far? Did he make a mistake and he, he got something that rhymed with what he was asked? Now look at those picture clues carefully. Handing the varmint that briar wood sure hurt him and made him upset. Later, when the pot was filled with water, the scruffy varmint lay against a rock, licking his paws and barking orders. Hustle, bunny rabbit. Get the flower. Yes, sir, said buddy. Look what he put in there. Is that the kind of flour you cook with? Five pinches of salt. Yes siree, said Buddy. Five pinches, what did Buddy get? 15 tomatoes. Yes siree, said Buddy. Ooh, I'm wondering how this is all going to work out with the varmint. Buddy's making a lot of mistakes. I can tell by the picture clues. And a big load of squash. Yes, sirree, said Buddy. What did he get, readers? The scruffy varmint rose and gave the soup a stir. He took a taste. It tasted a little like, well, a little, maybe it needed some pepper. Bunny rabbit, get the pepper from the left side of the kitchen sink, the varmint growled. Who? Get the what from the where side of the where what? asked Buddy. <laughs> the scruffy varmint repeated. Who? Get the what from the where side of the where what? Never mind. He stalked into the kitchen and got the pepper himself and sprinkled it into the soup. 
There, he snarled. Now, Bunny Rabbit, put the soup on the fire. Buddy put the soup in the fire. Oh, man, I predict this is not going to end well with the angry varmint. The fire went hiss. So did the scruffy varmint. I'll teach you, he howled. I will have soup. Bunny rabbit soup. And I know just the bunny to use. The bunny rabbit who never listens. Buddy listened. He also hopped oh, very, very, very fast. Faster than he had ever hopped in his whole life. He whizzed up the road past the vegetable stand and into the safety of his house. And a little later, when Buddy's parents asked him to bring a pen and a slice of bread, Buddy listened. So how'd you do on your predictions? I was correct when I predicted this would not end well with the nasty varmint. But I did not predict that it would help change Buddy's listening skills. That's such a great ending. I love when fiction stories have a happy ending, like, listen, buddy. That makes me happy, too. Okay. So let's talk about it. What was one prediction that you made, readers, while we read this text, Listen, Buddy? I want you to pause the video now, talk to someone in your house, write this in a reading journal, piece of paper, on a sticky note, your digital reading journal that you may have started, anywhere that works for you. It could sound something like this. My prediction was after Buddy didn't listen to his parents and kept making mistakes, bringing them things that rhymed with what they asked for, he would continue to make those mistakes. I predicted this because he was making those mistakes over and over and over and nothing that his parents tried worked to help him become a better listener. Great work, readers. So let's reread our target for today. I can predict what will happen next in the text. How'd you do? I did great. I was making predictions that were right on. I made some predictions that made sense and some that didn't quite fit what was happening. I need to work on my predicting skills. Wherever you are is just fine, readers. Just know where you are because that helps you to know what to work on next. I'm proud of you. Way to go. All right, now here's a challenge if you're up for it. Go ahead and write about it. Here's how it could sound. Today we read Listen Buddy by Helen Lester. One prediction I made was, I predicted this because smart predictions are made when I use my background knowledge that I have in my head, plus the text clues of what has already happened so far in the text. Way to go, readers. I have one last question for you today, super reader. What was the author's message in this text? What do you think the author wants us to learn? That's right, I agree. Being a good listener is important. And Buddy had to learn that a scary hard way. So I sure hope you're being good listeners today at home. Have a great day, readers. We'll see you next time. Bye.